Shabbat Shalom. Happy Sabbath to everybody. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Welcome back. You ready to get back into the word of Yahweh? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of St. Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 53. St. Luke, chapter 24. You got your scriptures? All right, let's begin. Verse 1. But on day one of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. All right, putting the scriptures in context. <laughs> you have to put the scriptures in context because people take the scriptures out of context. And that's why you have all these different religions. The scriptures from Genesis to Revelation are written to the chosen people. It's a history book. It's not a religious book, <laughs> but it's alive. The word of Yahweh is alive. It's quick and powerful than any two-edged sword. And so it's always relevant. <laughs> Luke is a physician. He wrote the book of the Gospel of Luke. He is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel that were scattered among the Japhat Gentiles. And wherever they were scattered, they were referred to as Gentiles or whatever location, Greece or Rome, Greek or, 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 or Romans, or just what called them Gentiles. That's what the ten tribes of the northern kingdom were referred to as. They were no longer referred to as Israel. They were referred to as Gentiles. A lot of people don't understand that in the scriptures due to ignorance. Paul always said, I will not have you ignorant, brethren. <laughs> and so that's why there's a lot of confusion and deception because people take the scriptures out of context and they don't, they don't keep the context. So when you don't understand the context of the scriptures, uh, you can make it say anything you want to say. That's why. People read John 3.16 and they think that, okay, he's talking about everybody in the whole wide world because they take that scripture out of context. Read it in context and you will see that he's not talking to everybody in the whole wide world and he's not talking about everybody in the whole wide world. <laughs> That's what I mean by keeping the scriptures in context because if you don't, you think, Every time you see whosoever and everybody in the world, you think it's, talk, it's about everybody else. And Paul used reference to Jews and Greeks or Jews and Gentiles. He's making reference to the two kingdoms of Israel. So this is the context of the scriptures that you have to understand. Because the Old Testament and the New Testament are in agreement. They're on one accord. There's no contradiction. There's no conflict. They're in total agreement. The Old Testament and the New Testament. But people get to the New Testament and somehow they think it's not about the 12 tribes of Israel. It's about Gentiles. That just shows that they don't understand the scriptures because the scriptures are talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Even when it says Gentiles. Because Israel was divided into two kingdoms. And most people don't realize that. But that's stated in the Old Testament. And because they were divided into two kingdoms, when you get to the New Testament, they are still divided into two kingdoms. They just refer to as Gentile. <laughs> so that's vitally important when you're studying the scriptures to understand the scriptures. So back in verse 1 it says, but on day one of the week, an early dawn, they came to the tomb. Who is they? You're going to get into it and tell you exactly who they are. But they are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, called Jews. The southern kingdom is called Judah. 
But Benjamin was a part of the southern kingdom. So that's why I mentioned Benjamin. And so these are the they that they're talking about. They're talking about Israelites, Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> they came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. Okay? And it's vitally important that you understand this. It says on the day one of the week, the first day of the week, which is what we call Sunday. Sunday, <laughs> and I say it like that, <laughs> is not the Sabbath. And that's why... People think Sunday is the Sabbath. Sunday is not the Sabbath. But the Roman Catholics have told you that Sunday is the Sabbath. And most of y'all go to these 501c3 corporations, the Antichrist church system, on Sunday. Because you don't understand that Sunday is not the Sabbath. You've been deceived. <coughs> The Sabbath is still the seventh day. Today is the Sabbath. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're supposed to keep the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 2. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. So this is where they was going. They was going to the tomb. What's at the tomb? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai had been crucified. And laid in the tomb. And so they couldn't go until after the Sabbath. So it's after the Sabbath. It's the first day of the week, Sunday. And so that's the day that they went to the tomb. And when they got there, they saw the stone that was rolled away. Because they had put a stone upon the tomb so no one could get in or get out. Because there was some contradiction and conflict about what was going on with the tomb, what was going on with Yahweh Shai and his followers. And the ruling class people, the, the chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, they had talked to the uh, Roman uh, governor, Pilate, and said, look, this, this deceiver said he's going to rise. We need to secure the tomb. So that nobody can rise or get up or get out or anything like that. So they put two Roman soldiers to secure the tomb. And so it didn't work out. <laughs> so the stone has been rolled away. It was there on the fake mouth of the tomb when you walk in. But now the stone is rolled away. And this is what verse 2 is saying. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Verse 3, and having entered, they did not find the body of the master, Yahweh Shai. And so they walked in, looked in around, well, where's the body? <laughs> and they thought it, the, the stone rolled away, like, who, well, we're probably wondering, who rolled away this stone? How did it move? And then they're looking for the body. Well, if the stone is rolled away, then why would there be a body on the inside? <laughs> They entered in, they did not find the body of the master, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was laying in the tomb, and he had as, as expired. He was crucified. He was wrapped in a cloth. But the, his body is not there. He is not there. Yahweh Shai is not there. They couldn't find the body of Yahweh Shai. Verse 4, and it came to be, as they were perplexed about this, that see, Two men stood by them in glittering garments. And so they was like, well, what's going on? <laughs> Why is the stone rolled away and where is his body? Something ain't right. What's, what, what happened? And they totally didn't remember that Yahweh Shai said he was going to rise from the dead. They just could, didn't connect that with the stone being rolled away. Verse 5, and becoming frightened... And bowing their faces to the earth, these said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? And so when they got to the tomb and saw that the body wasn't there, the two angels, did they say two angels? Yeah, two men. They call them men, but they're, they're, they're angels. They're the servants of the Most High. Uh, two messengers. And the messengers said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? And so, <laughs> the, 
the messengers appeared to let them know what was going on. He's like, okay, we know why y'all here, but why are you seeking the living among the dead? This tomb is for dead people. There's no body in here that's dead. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? <laughs> Verse 6, he is not here, but has risen, but has risen up. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. And so the angels are bringing it back to their remembrance to what Yahweh had spoken to them that he was going to be killed and on the third day he was going to rise. And that's exactly what's happened. He rose from the dead. And so the angels are informing them that that's what has happened. He is not here. He has been raised up. <laughs> he told y'all what was going to happen in Galilee. Don't you remember that? Verse 7, saying the son of Adam has to be delivered into the hands of sinners and be impaled, crucified, and the third day rise again. So the angels told them exactly what Yahweh Shai had said to them. Let them know, look, this is what he said to y'all and this is exactly what happened. He said that he was going to be delivered to the hands of sinners, he was going to be crucified, and on the third day he was going to rise. That's exactly what's happened. So you want to know what's going on? That's what's going on. He has risen from the dead. Verse 8. And they remembered his words. And they was like, oh, wow. <laughs> he did say that. And so now this changes everything. Because you got to understand what they was going through. They was in mourning. <laughs> Uh, you know, Yahweh Shah had expired, had been crucified on the cross, and three days had passed, and so, so they was mourning for his him because he, he they loved him, and and now he was gone, and and they didn't think they didn't remember or believe or something that he was going to rise from the dead. They wasn't thinking on those lines. That's why they came back to him to 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 with the body to preserve it, to bring spices and stuff. To anoint the body, you know, that's what they would. They didn't think that he was going to be alive. <laughs> they thought he was still going to be dead when they got there, and so the angel said, "No, he ain't dead. He's, he has risen." <laughs> and so now this changes everything about what they think and how they live their life from this point forward. Verse nine, and having returned from the tomb. They reported all this to the eleven and to and to all the rest. And so these are the the people that that first went to the tomb. And it's gonna tell you in a few minutes who they are. But they went back to tell all the rest the, of the the apostles, the eleven apostles, because Judah had killed himself, hung himself in the tree. So it was the eleven apostles left. And the rest of the disciples that was there. So they, they went to the tomb. They was looking for the body of Yahweh Shai. He wasn't there. And they met these angels. And the angels told them what was going on. So they reported all this information back to the apostles. <laughs> about what was happening. Verse 10. And it was Miriam from Magdala. And Johanna. And Miriam the mother of Jacob. And the rest with them who told these to the emissaries, the apostles. And so it was all these women <laughs> that had went to the tomb because they had brought these spices to anoint the body of Yahweh Shai. They thought he was still going to be dead and in the tomb. He had already told them, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to arrive on the third day. But... They didn't understand exactly what that meant. <laughs> they thought he still was going to be in the tomb. <laughs> and so when they got there, he wasn't there. That changed everything because, again, they were in mourning. They, and now he's not there. So that, that, that cancels out the mourning, you know, of, of sorrow. That, okay, he's not dead, so he's alive. So it's supposed to bring joy and gladness. Verse 11. And their words appeared to them to be nonsense, and they did not believe them. And so all the words that Miriam and Johanna and the rest of the people, women that were with them, t 
told the apostles what was happening, the rest of the disciples what was happening. And they said, that's rubbish. That's the British would say, rubbish. <laughs> they said, Yahweh Shai wasn't there. The angel said he rose from the dead. And, and then they're, they're saying, oh, that's rubbish. That's, that's not true. That's nonsense. <laughs> they did not believe what the women were saying. Y'all must... <laughs> Y'all must have lost y'all, man. Y'all must be crack, <laughs> smoking something or something. Y'all, how you talking about he's, he's not there? He died, he was crucified, and somebody must have took his body because he, he was dead. So, ain't, ain't no, whatever y'all saying, it's not true. He hasn't risen from the dead. That, that's, they can't have, that's impossible. That's what they're thinking. Verse 12, but Kepha arose and ran to the tomb. And stooping down, he saw the linen wrappings and laying by themselves, and he went away home, marveling at what took place. And so Kepha, who we call Peter, he went down, he ran down to the tomb. He like, well, I got to see this for myself. And so he got to the tomb, he stooped down, saw the linen wrapping by themselves, and he went away. He like, okay, uh, the, the, st the, st the, st the stone is rolled away. The body of Yahweh Shai is not here. The linen cloth is wrapped neatly to the side. <laughs> he said, okay, I got to figure this out. It didn't make sense to him. And so he was, went away home marveling at what took place. And so if, if, he, if he is alive, and he realized this changes everything. Because they was in mourning. They wasn't expecting him to rise. They just didn't think about that. And so now that it has happened, they they have to understand this and, and 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 figure out okay what does this mean going forward for the rest of their life <laughs> because it changes everything verse 13 and see two of them were going that same day to a village called Emmaus which was 60 stadia from Jerusalem uh, that's about 68 miles, 6.8 miles, <laughs> sorry about that, and so two of the disciples, they had been traveling, and they were going to a village called Emmaus, uh, uh, they were coming from Jerusalem, verse 14, and they were talking to each other of all this which had taken place, and so these two disciples, you know, they had heard about what happened, that Yahweh Shai had been crucified. And so they were processing it in their mind. So it's been three days now since this all happened. And so they were still processing it in mourning. And they, you know, at this point, they just thought, okay, everything is over. All the stuff we did, I guess it doesn't really matter anymore. <laughs> Because he's dead. He's he been crucified. And so this is what their perception was at this time, at this moment. Verse 15. And it came to be, as they were talking and reasoning, that Yahweh Shai himself drew near and went with them. And so they're just walking along, <laughs> headed toward the mess. And all of a sudden, Yahweh Shai came up near them. Probably from behind, like, hold up, guys, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> They're like, well, what did they? It makes you wonder, wonder, ask the question, though, what, where did you come from? <laughs> and so this is something that you can keep in mind, put the, put in your back pocket to think on, to meditate on. Yahweh Shia is in his glorified body. Time is not relevant to him. He can go anywhere and everywhere. It, and it's not, time is not, doesn't exist for him. And so, he just showed up. <laughs> he, he saw what they was doing, what they were talking about. He had rose from the dead. He said, well, let me go and, and straighten them out and, and give them some insight on what's going on. Because apparently, they didn't really believe that I was going to rise. And now that I've risen, I have to explain to them what's going on. <laughs> So Yahweh Shai himself drew near and went with them. Verse 16, but their eyes were restrained 
so that they did not know him. So they was looking at him, but they didn't realize it was Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. Verse 17. And he said to them, What are these words you are exchanging which, with each other as you are walking and you are sad? So this is what Yahweh Shai said to the two disciples. He said, Oh, what's going on? <laughs> what are y'all talking about? Why do y'all seem so sad? <laughs> he knew what they were talking about, but he wanted to hear what they were saying of their, of, from them directly from them. Verse 18, And the one whose name was Cleophas answering said to him, Are you the lone visitor in Jerusalem who does not know what took place in these days? They said, Cleophas said, Are you the only one here in, in Jerusalem that don't know what happened in these days? What do you mean? What, what What's going on? Everybody is talking about this. This is on CNN, Fox News, everywhere. It's all over the place. Everybody is talking about it. It's, it's, it's everywhere. You can't go anywhere without not knowing this. You, who are you? You don't know this has happened? <laughs> Verse 19. And he said to them, what? And they said to him concerning Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before Elohim and all the people. <laughs> so Yahweh Shai just kind of messing with him a little bit. Like, what? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> they said, concerning him, Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, the prophet. He was doing a lot of mighty work, a lot of mighty deeds before he left Elohim. Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the people. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Verse 20. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and impaled him, crucified him. He, they said and, and, well, he was killed. Our own people, the chief priests, the ruling class people, the, the religious folk, the 501c3 corporations, <laughs> pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system, chief priests and rulers, they're supposed to know the word. But they delivered him to, to be condemned to death and impaled him, <laughs> crucified him. That's what we're talking about. Verse 21. We, however, were expecting that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. But besides all this, today is the third day since these matters took place. And again, they were in mourning because Yahweh Shai had been crucified. He was dead. He had been put in the tomb. They really didn't understand or grasp what he meant by he was going to rise the third day. As far as they were concerned, he was still dead. And they was trying to figure out, okay, what do we do now? He's dead. So we don't know what this means for us, for us as Israel. They was explaining to Yahweh Shai, even though they didn't know who he was, we were expecting that he was going to redeem Israel. Redeem Israel. Redeem Israel. I have to say it that way because people take the scriptures out of context and think it's about everybody. Did they say redeem everybody? No. They said redeem Israel. That's who he came to redeem. That's why they said that. We were expecting that it would be he who was going to redeem Israel. And it's not about everybody else. You got to understand that. You've been deceived. You've been lied to. You've been hoodwinked. If you think it's about anybody and everybody else, you've just been deceived. But besides all this, today is the third day since these matters took place. So they were mourning. They were sad. That's why they were sad because they didn't know what to do after this. Yahweh Shai. From their perspective, he, he had been crucified. He was dead. And they was hoping that he was going to redeem them, redeem Israel. Verse 22. But certain women of ours who arrived at the tomb early also astonished us. And so they went on to say that if some women came, you know, that we know that was following him, they was going to go and, and, and 
put some spices around his body. But when they got to the tomb, his body wasn't there. And they told us the angels met them and, and told them that he was alive and he was risen. <laughs> so they're explaining this to Yahweh <laughs> said So we were astonished. And so now we're trying to figure out, okay, if he's alive, what does that mean? And where is he? <laughs> Verse 23, when they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of messengers who said he was alive. And so they was continuing to explain to Yahweh Shai what had happened, what the women told them. That they didn't find the body, two messengers told them that he was alive. And so they was trying to figure out, okay, if he's alive then, where is he? Because... We want to know. <laughs> Verse 24. And some of those with us went to the tomb and found it, as also the, the women had said, but they did not see him. And they continued to tell you how it shot. Some of us went to the tomb to see if that was so, and it was. The, the tomb was rolled away. The body wasn't there. And so we didn't see him. And so if he is risen... Then where is he? <laughs> they still trying to figure this out. And they were telling you how it This is what we've been talking about. Verse 25. And he said to them, O thoughtless ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. And so Yahweh was getting on their case because he had told them before what was going to happen. But they never comprehended or believed. The same way it is today. I'm telling you who you are. <laughs> I'm telling you who you are. You are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered, especially the southern kingdom of Judah. We're scattered into all the earth, the four corners of the earth everywhere. That's who we are. <laughs> We're Jews. Original Jews, Hebrew Jews. <laughs> That's who we are. I'm telling you that. But a lot of y'all still find that difficult to understand, difficult to believe. Just like we were then, we're still now. Oh, thoughtless ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Everything that I'm saying, it's already been spoken by the prophets. It's already been spoken by Moshe and the law. And so Yahweh Shai is letting them know, y'all, you, you're thoughtless because you're not believing what the scriptures have said, what has been spoken. Verse 26, was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these and to enter into his esteem, his glory? So he's letting them know, all of the stuff that has happened had to happen. It was necessary. And that's, it was, then and now. Everything that is happening Everything that has happened and everything that's going to happen is necessary. Yahweh Shai had to come, had to give his life for Israel, had to be crucified, had to rise again on the third day. And he's coming back for Israel. <laughs> that's the gospel of the kingdom. He had to enter into his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 27, and beginning at Moshe and all the prophets, he was explaining to them in all the scriptures the matters concerning himself. So he had to break it down, all the way down. Go back to the Old Testament. That's why I keep telling you, the Old Testament and the New Testament are in one accord. <laughs> They're in agreement. So he went all the way back to the Old Testament, to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. To Moshe, the law, and the prophets. He was explaining to them in all the scriptures the matters concerning himself. Who he came for, why he came, who he gave his life for, who he rose for, who he's coming back for. All about the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not about everybody else. That's what he was telling them. But they knew. It was about Israel. They didn't have a problem with that. We got a problem with it today because we've been deceived. 
We think it's about everybody else. With all these different religions, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Catholicism, Seven Day of Venice, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness. We've been deceived by all these different religions. Yahweh Shai and Yahweh don't have anything to do with any religion. Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh of a people. He's God of a people, not a religion. Yahweh Shai, Jesus, is the Messiah of the 12 tribes of Israel. He's not the Messiah of any religion. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 28. And they approached the village where they were going, and he seemed to be going on. And so they finally got to Emmaus, and they was getting ready to turn in. And Yahweh Shai seemed like he was, well, I'm going to be headed on down the road a bit. <laughs> Uh, verse 29, and they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day has declined. And he went in and stayed with them. So Yahweh Shai broke it down to them and explained to them, because they were in mourning. They thought that was it, that Yahweh Shai was going to be dead forever. And, and now that uh, they understand that he had to rise from the dead, they was excited. <laughs> and so they were like, stay with us. We want to hear some more of this. It, it, it's too late. You, you, you just stay with us. It, the sun is already going down. You, you can stay with us. <laughs> uh, and they urged him. Verse 30, and it came to be when he sat at the table with them, having taken the bread, he blessed and having broken it, he was giving it to them. So he agreed to stay with them. And he sat down with them and broke bread. And he explained to them what had happened. And he's getting ready to explain to them who he is. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 31. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. So Yahweh Shai sat down with them, broke bread with them, after he had rose from the dead, they were, you know, at this point, you know, before he showed up, you know, they was wondering, okay, if he's alive, where is he? And so out, out, and the, as they were wondering, where is he, he showed up. <laughs> and he explained to them what was going on and why everything happened that had to happen. And so now they had a better understanding and he broke bread with them. And then he under, made them understand, I am he. I'm Yahweh Shai. I'm your Messiah. <laughs> and the scripture said their eyes were open. They like, oh, it's the Messiah. <laughs> it's the Savior. <laughs> and they was really excited then. But then all of a sudden, he disappeared. <laughs> and so this is what's going to happen to us. All of the chosen people of the, uh, of the Father, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're going to get a glorified body. And we're going to be able to appear and go wherever we want to go. We're not going to be, time is not going to have any control over us. This is just one aspect of what we're going to be able to do. Yahweh Shai just disappeared out of their sight. He was gone. Verse 32, and they said to each other, was not our heart burning within us as he was speaking to us on the way and as he was opening the scriptures to us? And so when Yahweh Shai was ministering to them, their heart was burning with the word because the word was showing them who Yahweh Shai is and why they finally understood everything that they need to understood, understand. And how he was opening the scriptures unto them. It was like seeing it for the first time. And that's what it's like when you realize who you are. Hallelujah. That you are Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham. You're the chosen people of the 12 tribes of Israel. When that light goes on, it changes everything. Because you, then you realize that. You've been a part of all these different religious systems. 
and you didn't even know that you was a part of it. But if you don't know who you are, then you can. that's why you're deceived because you don't know that you're the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why you're deceived. You got to have an understanding of the scripture to know who you are. The scriptures are written to a chosen people. It's not written to anybody and everybody. Anybody and everybody that's reading the scripture, taking the scriptures out of context, trying to apply the scriptures to them. They're not, if they're not the 12 tribes of Israel, the scripture does not apply to them. The kingdom of heaven is for the 12 tribes of Israel. And so that's why you have all these different religions, especially Christianity. Christianity don't have anything to do with the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why they want to say, oh, we're Gentiles. And so when Paul, the apostles say Jews and Gentiles or Jews and Greek, they want to lump all of the 12 tribes of Israel as Jews. That's ignorant. Only the southern kingdom are Jews. The northern kingdom, the ten tribes of the northern kingdom were never called Jews. But through ignorance, you don't know any better, and you lump all of the 12 tribes as Jews. That's ignorance. And a lot of y'all don't even know that Israel was divided into two kingdoms. And so you see Jews and Gentiles, or Jews and Greeks, and you think, okay, now Gentiles, that means everybody else in the whole wide world. You're deceived. You're ignorant of the scriptures. That's not what it means. <laughs> because you're in these 501c3 corporations. And they have to justify that the scriptures are written to them. But that's a lie. It's not written to them. That's why they say, okay, Gentiles, that's everybody else in the whole wide world. Christianity. Jesus come to save the Christian. He didn't come to start a religion called Christianity. The disciples never called themselves Christian. It's about the 12 tribes of Israel, the two kingdoms. Jews is the southern kingdom. And when you see Gentiles or Greeks, they're talking about the northern kingdom. The 10 tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel. They're scattered. They're no longer referred to as Israel they are referred to as Gentiles. Go read St. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 7. I forgot what verse exactly, but go read that. It talks about Jesus, Yahweh Shai was talking to the other tribes, of the uh, southern kingdom of Judah, and the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and the chief priests and rulers, and... <clears throat> He was saying, I'm going somewhere and y'all can't follow me. They was like, well, where are you going? Are you going to the disperse? The word disperse is talking about the northern kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes of the northern kingdom. Are you going to the disperse among the Gentiles, among the Japheth Gentiles? Go read Genesis chapter 10. The only people ever referred to as Gentiles in the beginning was Japheth. Japheth was referred to as Gentiles, his people. Ham was not referred to as Gentiles, nor was Shem. And so, would he go among the Japheth Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? He said disperse among the Gentiles, so that's what he's talking about. Teach the disperse among the Gentiles. The, the disperse among the Gentiles is the ten tribes of the northern kingdom. Go read. Hosea 8 and 8. Yahweh said that he was going to scatter Israel, the ten tribes of the northern kingdom, among the Gentiles as a vessel of no pleasure. Go back, re-study, and research the scriptures. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 33. And rising up. That same hour, they returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together. And so these two disciples, they were so excited, they came to Emmaus. <laughs> but they said, well, we got to go tell everybody else. <laughs> and so they rose up that same hour and went to Jerusalem to find the eleven disciples, the eleven apostles, and, and 
those that was gathered with him, hey, we got to share this because this we can't keep it to ourselves. It's so, so great. So that's what they did. Verse 34 saying, the master was truly raised and has appeared to Shimon. <laughs> and they just couldn't keep it. They had to tell it. He, he appeared to us. We saw him. We talked to him. We broke bread with him. <laughs> he is truly raised up. Hallelujah. Verse 35. And they related what took place on the way and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of bread. He broke bread with us. We sat down with him. He explained everything to us. We don't, we understand exactly now what's going on. <laughs> so they had us. They had church where two or three are gathered in my name. There am I in the midst. They had church. They, they, they start preaching and teaching to the other disciples. And that's why we are here. We got to preach and teach to all the other uh, uh, children of Israel. We're scattered into all the earth. That's where we are. That's why I said go into all the world. Because we're scattered in all the world. <laughs> but people don't understand that it's just talking about Israel. Verse 36. And as they were saying this, Yahweh Shai himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. Or Shalom. <laughs> and so they was having church. They was praising Yahweh, sharing the word. Telling them about Yahweh Shah that he had risen. And all of a sudden, Yahweh Shah showed up himself. He's like, okay, I'm going to confirm what they're telling you. So he just showed up in the midst of them saying, hey, what's happening? Shalom. <laughs> Verse 37. And being startled and frightened, they thought they had seen a spirit. Like, whoa, 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 what's that? Who's that? What? <laughs> you know how we is. It's a ghost. <laughs> they were startled. They're like, who, what? <laughs> they couldn't believe it. Because he didn't knock. He just showed up. Verse 38, and said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Again, you got to understand what was happening. Three days had passed. Yahweh Shai had, passed, had been crucified. He was dead. So they were in mourning. And the, the for them to... He, they just thought he was dead and that was it. And now they're hearing reports that he had risen. He was risen. He's alive. So they're excited about it. And so they're like, okay, if he's alive, where is he? And all of a sudden, he showed up. He's like, oh, here I am. <laughs> they say, what are you, why are you troubled? What, why, why do you doubt in your heart? Verse 39. See my hand and my feet. That it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. So Yahweh Shah had to show his apostles, his disciples. Okay. Let's clear it all up. I'm, it's me. <laughs> Look at my hands and my feet. Touch me. Handle me. See that is me. I'm not a spirit. I'm flesh and bones. <laughs> flesh and bones. A spirit does not have flesh and bones as such as I have. Verse 40. And saying this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Look, this is where they pierced me. This is where they nailed the stakes in my hands and my feet. Verse 41. And while they were still not believing for joy and marveling, he said to them, have you any food here? He's like, I'm, I'm hungry. Y'all got any food? <laughs> what y'all got to eat around here? Verse 42, and they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. They're like, yeah, yeah, we got something. <laughs> so they gave him some fish and some honeycomb. And taking it, he ate in their presence. Yeah, oh, this is pretty good. Who cooked this? <laughs> uh, so he ate some fish and some honeycomb right there in their presence. Verse 44, and he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all have to be fulfilled that were written in the Torah of Moshe and the prophets and the, t and the helium concerning me, meaning the Psalms. <clears throat> so Yahweh Shai had to help them understand what was going on. He said, I, I told y'all all this before, before 
I was crucified. That's why I was keep telling you, I'm going to be crucified. <laughs> I'm going to be turned over to the sinners. The chief priests, they're going to turn me over to the, the, the Gentiles, to Pilate. And they're going to mock me. And they're going to crucify me. But on the third day, I'm going to rise. I told y'all all this. Everything that's written in the Torah, in Moshe, and the prophets, and the Psalms, telling them concerning me. I've explained it all to you. Everything that's written has to happen. That all that... Uh, that uh, all have to be fulfilled that were written. And so he had to explain to them. That's why it's imperative that you believe the scriptures. That's why it's imperative that you believe the scriptures. Because the same thing it was then is the same thing it is now. We, you have to believe the scriptures. When I tell you that you are Israel, you have to believe the scriptures. Not just me. Go back and restudy and research the scriptures. That's who we are. I know it sounds impossible <laughs> because your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system, they don't know. They deceive. If the blind lead the blind, they're both going to fall into the ditch. They haven't told you that you're Israel. They, they want to tell you you're a Christian. They're lying to you. Go back and restudy and research the scriptures. Yahweh Shah is only coming back for his chosen people, Israel, period. There are two kingdoms. Go read Ezekiel chapter 37. It'll break it down to you. The people over in the land called the nation of Israel, they're not the chosen people. They have taken over that land by fraud and deceit. They're Ashkenaz, Khazarians, Japheth, Gentiles, and Edomites. That's who they are. And they know they're not the chosen people. The scripture even know that they're not the chosen people and that they were going to take over that land by fraud and, this, and deceit. The scripture says they call themselves Jews and do lie. They're the synagogue of Satan. That's why they call themselves Jewish. Anyone, anywhere, anybody can practice a religion. Judaism is a religion. Anybody can practice Judaism and call himself Jewish. Anybody can practice Christianity and call himself a Christian or Islam or whatever else religion there is. But the scriptures are not about any religion. It's about a people. That's what you got to understand. It's not about any religion. So those people over in the land, they're not the chosen people. They're not of the seed of Abraham. They're not of the tribe of Judah. All of the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered. That's what the scripture says. And we're going to be here until the Most High, Yahweh Shai, comes to gather us. So they said, oh, Israel has returned to its home. That scripture has been fulfilled. That scripture has not been fulfilled. We, it won't be fulfilled until Yahweh Shai comes to get us. That's when the scripture will be fulfilled. So if you believe that those people are Israel, you are deceived. Period. Verse 45. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. See, it's all about the scriptures. You got to quit taking anybody and everybody's word. Especially these 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system. All these different religions. Go back and restudy and research the scriptures for yourself. Don't even take my word at face value. Go back and restudy and research to see if what I'm saying is true. <clears throat> Verse 46. It said to them, Thus it has been written... And so it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise again from the dead the third day. And so Yahweh Shai broke it all the way down to them. He said, it's written. It had to happen. <laughs> the same way it was then is the same way it is now. Everything that's written has to happen. It will happen. It's going to happen. It has happened and it's going to happen. And if you don't understand that, you may end up getting left out of the kingdom. 
Because it's all about the scriptures being fulfilled. Verse 47. And that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name, Yahweh Shai, to all nations, all the twelve tribes of Israel. That's when they say nation, that's who he's talking about. He's not talking about everybody else in the whole wide world. But all the twelve tribes of Israel are scattered among all the other nations in the world. And so he's still talking about the twelve tribes of Israel. Because we're scattered among all the nations in the earth. We're scattered. Beginning at Jerusalem. So that's why people take this scripture out of context. Because they see all the nations and they think it's about everybody. That's taking the scriptures out of context. It says Yahweh he, he came to save his people from their sins. That's what it says in Matthew, I think, 1 and 21. Go back and restudy and research the scriptures. It's not about everybody. Everybody want to keep saying, it's about everybody. It's about humanity. That doctrine is from the devil. That's the Antichrist church system. It's not about everybody. It's never been about everybody. We're worried about everybody and we're worried about yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 48. And you are witnesses of these matters. And so Yahweh Shah had to come back and appear to them to show them that look, this is what's going on. And this is why I'm showing up just for you so that you can understand. And when you teach and preach that you're a witness, you seen me firsthand that I, I have in fact risen from the dead to give all of Israel hope because I'm coming back for them. The kingdom of heaven is for all of the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 49. And see, I am sending the promise of my father upon you, but you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. And so he's letting them know, look, I know what's going on maybe kind of be overwhelming at this point in time, but that's all right. Y'all going to be all right. <laughs> I'm going to send the, the promise of my father, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, give you some power from on high, hallelujah, <laughs> so you can stand up and testify anywhere and to anybody and not be afraid and not be ashamed, but you got to go to Jerusalem Jerusalem and, and wait for the promise of the Father. He's talking to his disciples, the 12 tribes of Israel, the, the apostles. It's for the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not for everybody else. Hallelujah. Verse 50. And he led them out as far as the Beth Anya, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And so... He had to calm them down, calm their nerves down, <clears throat> reassure them, give them confidence and faith in the scriptures to believe, and not only to believe, to, to put faith into works and to go out and continue to do the work that he called them to do. And so after he had explained everything, he took them out as far as Beth, Beth Anya, and he lifted up his hands and he blessed all of his disciples. Verse 51. And it came to be while he was blessing them that he was parted from them and was taken up into the heavens. And so as he was explaining to them everything that they need to know, and after he blessed them, the, the skies, the clouds <coughs> came down and took him back up into heaven. And that's where he is. He's in, at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for the saints, all of the 12 tribes of Israel that believe the gospel of the kingdom. And so the same way he went up in the clouds is the same way he's coming back in the clouds. <clears throat> it's going to be awesome. He's coming back for all of the 12 tribes of Israel that believe the gospel of the kingdom. Verse 52. And they, having bowed down to him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Oh, they was excited. Now they was fired up. He's alive. Holly. Ooh. Boy, they couldn't hold it in. 
<laughs> they were rejoicing because this changed everything. And so that's what I mean. Once you understand and know who you are, it changes everything. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 53. And we're continuing in the set apart place, in the temple, praising and blessing Elohim. So nothing could hold them down. Nothing could stop them. They were like, this is it. This this change. It ch when it changes everything, it changes everything. You're willing to go the, the distance, no matter what. What, no matter what, no matter what you face, you, you, that's it. Your mind is made up. Nobody else can ever tell you anything different. You, you know the truth for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.